Great is your faithfulness. Great is your goodness, God. Great is your love for us. Great are you, Father, in the middle of our dark season. Father, you're still great in the middle of a storm. You're still good in the middle of the fight. You're still good when the doctor gave us a bad report. You are still good. You're still good when the courtroom is coming against us. You're still good, Lord. We stand on your promises. You're a faithful God. You've never left us. You will never forsake us. God, you are always with us. You are a good God. If you believe that, just lift your hands to heaven. And I want you to say this with all your voice and with all your heart. As sincerely as you can get these words out, say this, you're faithful. Say it and like you're trying to convince yourself of these words. Say, God, you're faithful. You're faithful to me. Even when I'm not faithful to you, I thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Isn't he a good God, church? We serve a king that was willing to put his crown down, leave heaven, and come after you. We serve the kind of God who is not dictating his love based on your performance. The kind of God that we serve is unlike any other God, quote unquote, that this world has to offer. That's based merely on how good or how bad we can be. We serve the kind of God that's faithful through our highs and through our lows, when we're sober and when we're addicted, when we're lost and when we're found. We serve the kind of God that loves us, that cares for us, that's with us through the good and through the bad. That's the kind of God that we serve. He is faithful through it all. He's faithful through it all. Man, God is so good. I'm going to read a scripture, then I'll pray, then we can take a seat. It says in Matthew chapter 5, this is the opening scripture, the main scripture for the night. You are the light of the world. You. You are the light. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. See, in the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father, so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father, so that everyone will praise your Heavenly Father, come on, I think we should give a little praise to our Heavenly Father right now. I think now's a good time to lift up some praise to the God who is with us, the King of Kings, the one who was raised from the dead. I think we can give a little praise to Him tonight, to the one who is worthy, Jesus. Father, have your way. Speak through me. Put me aside. It's not about my opinion, Lord. Just want the word that you spoke to me. Just allow me to be the deliverer. You speak tonight, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Give your neighbor a high five. So good to have everyone here tonight. We have all the campuses represented. Pomona campus in the building. Arrowhead campus in the building. We even have TJ campus in the building. Hallmark campus in the building. Our online campus in the building. Let's hear it for them. It's a really exciting time for our church. Pastor Marco is back, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to be here this Sunday bringing an on-time, on-fire word. I got to speak to him a little this week, and let me tell you, I'm not going to spill any beans, but you better come ready with a notepad and your Bible ready for Sunday. It's going to 
be good in Jesus' name. Don't miss it. Sunday at 9 and 11. We'll be here. Tonight, we're going to talk about these four words. You are the light. Look at somebody next to you and tell them, you are the light. You are the light. You are the light. You are the light. There's a problem, I think. The problem that we have in our lives is we don't realize the power or the greatness that lives within us. I think if we could come to understand how that power transforms atmospheres the moment that we step into them, I think we would carry ourselves with a greater confidence and with a greater boldness in life. I think we would no longer be intimidated to let it shine. As that old song says, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Today we're going to learn about that power. Today we're going to learn about that greatness that we carry. And we're going to learn how to let it shine. You know, I try as much as I can to keep up with what's going on around the world. And as we know right now, specifically with our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan, there's, there's a dire need in that country. At one point in this country, there were approximately 300 believers, 300 Christians that were known of in this country. And in the past 20 years, that number has grown to over 10,000 Christians in that country. That makes Afghanistan the third fastest growing church in the world. And right now I'm thinking about our brothers and sisters that are there. And no matter what your point of view is on this event, I'm not trying to politicize anything. The fact is this, our brothers and sisters need our prayers right now. The reality is this, all eyes are on them. The world is watching. I pray that God would have mercy on them and protect them. But even more than that, I pray that their lives would bring God glory and make his name more famous to the entire world. See, when I think about their lives, this scripture that says you are the light, that scripture comes to mind. When Jesus says you are the light of the world, and when I think about believers in Afghanistan, a place that's facing major persecution right now, I think about people that are standing on their faith in Jesus, even in the face of severe persecution. And when I think about them, I think about my own life, and I say, if they can do it, then so can I. Because the type of persecution that I face today is not even close to what some of them are facing right now. When I think about being a light in a world that's dark, I think about some of the things that they're facing, and I know if they can do it, so can I. Today, we're going to talk about that. We're going to look at how to walk as a light. We're going to look at through this scripture how we can walk and live as the light of the world. I want to give you four simple points. Four points from scripture derived from the word of God on how we can walk as a light in a dark world. And of course, there's gonna be more that we'll find in scripture, but these are the four I believe the Holy Spirit wants us to know tonight. Number one, God wants your light to be seen. <laughs> Write that one down. God wants your light to be seen. Matthew 5, 14 says, you are the light of the world. Like a city located some scriptures some versions include that word located on a hilltop that cannot be hidden that word light literally means to be to be set aflame that word located literally means to be set by god's intent in other words we can sum that scripture up to say this god has intentionally made it his divine purpose to place you on display by lighting you on fire. The moment that God lights you on fire, he does so in such a way that it's so visible to the world that it cannot be hidden. That word hidden in that scripture means to escape notice. Well, God is saying, I've lit you so on fire that you cannot escape the notice of the people that are around you. 
See, God is looking and searching and, and empowering a generation of believers in this world that cannot go unnoticed, that are so on fire for the gospel and on fire for the word of God and on fire for his love and on fire to touch hearts for his glory that they cannot go unnoticed. There's no way I can walk around the streets of San Bernardino and someone not see the light of Jesus living inside of me. Just recently, just last Friday, we took a group of about 30 young adults to the streets of San Bernardino on a Friday night on Baseline. Now, if you're a local, I'm sure you know what's up. We took a group of young adults out there, prayed up, fired up, ready to be the light in a dark place. And as we went out there, I can't tell you how many heads were turning, looking at a group of young adults, walking around with smiles on their faces, sober-minded, carrying a hope and a message about the love of Jesus Christ. We were able to see people turn their hearts over to Jesus on a late Friday night. People just posted up. I met a group of two young guys. Valentin and Martin. And these young guys didn't know what hit them. They were sitting in their car. I knocked on their window. I'm the light. I'm not, I'm not trying to hide. I'm going to find you. Knocked on their window. It was literally one of those moments. Hi, do you have time to talk about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? It was... They weren't going nowhere. That car was in park. They had to talk. <laughs> so at first they rolled the window down about halfway. All I could see was their eyes like this. They said, what's up? Like... And as I began to talk to them, little by little, that window started to go down. And the two people in that car saw something that was different than everything else they were looking at through their windshield and through their windows. Because what was passing by were drug dealers. Right on the other side of the parking lot were three prostitutes. Their pimp kept driving by. There's people strung out. Homeless walking the streets. People out of their mind. But what they began to see and that moment was something that looked a lot different. It couldn't be hidden. It was a love of Jesus. It wasn't me. It was a love of Jesus. And when Jesus began to talk to them, when they began to witness that light, their eyes began to open. Scales began to fall off of their eyes. And the hope that I believe that they've been longing for, it came and met them in the streets of San Bernardino on Baseline on a Friday night. Both of those young men gave their life to Jesus that night. See, when God lights us on fire, he intentionally placed us in positions that we can't go and notice. It's like a city that's located on a hill. When you see a nice bright city on a hill, you can't not notice it. You see it, it's clear. We have been set on display. Once you follow Jesus, your light becomes a billboard for the gospel. I want my life to be a billboard for the gospel. I don't want to be just those old billboards where like half of the stuff is peeling off. I want to be an LED screen billboard. I want to be the kind of billboard that is like too bright when you're driving by. And like that billboard is a little too bright for me, right? And that's the kind of billboard I want to be. I want to stand out for Jesus in places that are the darkest. I want, to live for, I want to live for Jesus and represent his name in places that have gone unnoticed and places that have gone abandoned. And I believe you do too. 
I believe I'm looking and I'm speaking right now to a group of people that are saying this. I want to stand up for Jesus in the places that I came from. I, I know where I used to come from. There were dark places. There was some dark, twisted stuff happening. But, but I want to shine for Jesus in those dark places. I want to take the love of God to the places where people are hurting, lost, and broken. And they don't know the way out. And I want to show them the way out. Because I am the light of the world. Someone say, I'm the light of the world. See, you've been saved to become a witness of his glory. If we got saved just so that we can come to know Jesus and that was it, then we would die the moment we got saved, we'd go to heaven. But we've been given a mission and an assignment that comes with our salvation. And the moment we get saved, we become a witness to the glory of God. 1 Peter 2.9 says this. But you are God's chosen treasure, priests who are kings, a special nation, or in other words, a special people that are set apart as God's devoted ones. He called you out of darkness. Oh, I got to pause there for a second. He called you out of darkness. You guys remember that dark place you came from? You guys remember what? You guys remember when you look back and you see the pictures and you think, man. Thank you, Lord. You brought me from so far. I look at pictures sometimes and I think I don't even recognize that person. I remember what was behind that smile in that picture. I remember what was going on. I remember the thoughts I used to have. I remember the way I used to live. I remember how twisted I used to think. Man, oh man, God, you are a good God because you called me out of the dark, twisted, lost places that I came from. You pulled me. You snatched me. And you set me apart to be a light in the dark places. Do I got anybody in here who's thankful that God called them out of the dark places, that God called them out of the addiction out of the fear out of the bondage out of the suicidal thoughts out of the depression out of the luck come on I know I got one or two or three people in here that are excited that God has called you out of the dark place man he brought the organ out he called you out of darkness to experience his marvelous light. I just think this is so crazy to me. That God wasn't looking for people that are already lit up. He wasn't looking for people that thought they were just so, they were a blessing to the, that they, they were so righteous. He came for people that were in the heart of darkness. Are you hearing me? He came for people that were bound in darkness. And he said, I want that person to experience my light. Isn't that so good that he, it was part of his destiny and his plan that he was going to snatch you out of the dark place so that you can get a taste of his light. He said, that's the person I want. That's the one I'm going to call. You've lived a life in the world. You've been bound. You've been lost. You've been hurt. You've been abandoned. And God is saying, that is going to be a story that will glorify my name and show how great my power works in weakness. He said this. And now he claims you as his very own. He did this so that you would broadcast his glorious wonders throughout the world. I don't just want to be a billboard. I want to be a broadcast station. I want to be a broadcast station. I want to be a satellite radio station that me, it reaches millions of people all throughout the world. I'm a, I want my life to broadcast spiritual waves of glory all throughout the places that I step into to let people know about the glory and the goodness of God. Do I have any billboard or broadcast stations up in this place? Your life is set apart. So that you can share about how good God is. Number two, keep the flame alive. Keep the flame alive. Look at someone next to you and say, keep the flame alive. Matthew 5.15 says, no one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. No one does that. You know who lights our lamp? God does. And he doesn't do so so that he can hide you. 
God doesn't light your fire just so that he can put it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. See that when we stay unhidden, we stay on fire. I'm going to say that again. When we stay unhidden, we stay on fire. I think that's a word for one of us tonight. Maybe I felt like I've been hiding my, glow, hiding my light under a basket. And I've been kind of keeping things a little hidden from people. And I've been pulling the billboard down. And I haven't been broadcasting about his love. And I haven't really been living the kind of life that shows or glorifies how good he is. I know he pulled me out of my misery. But I haven't really told many people about that. I have a testimony to share, but maybe I haven't really shared with anybody about how good it's been in my life. And see, this is what God is saying. If you want to stay on fire, stay unhidden. So you know what happens, and, and we, we all know this, that there's something that happens to a flame, to a wick, when you cover it. Every time you light a candle and you're ready to put it out, the quickest way to put it out is just to put the lid on top of it. Just begin to hide the flame and guarantee you in seconds that flame will go out. And in the same way in our lives, when we begin to hide the glory that God has put within us, when we hide the light that God has stored up within you, if you want the quickest way to begin to go out, to let your flame go out, just hide the glory. Hide the light that God has placed within you. Come on, somebody. Well... See, the lamp at this time, it was a flame kind of lamp. It wasn't like an on and off switch. And in order for it to stay alive, it had to remain uncovered. The consequences of a hidden light is that your flame begins to die out. But here's a great thing. Your light is greatest in the darkest places. Look at John 1.5. It says, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. That word extinguish means to gain control or to eliminate it. You know what this scripture is saying? Your light can never be taken captive by the darkness. The light that's within you cannot be taken captive by the darkness that's around you. That's not how God has designed the light to work because the light always influences the atmosphere. The darker the atmosphere, the brighter the light. The darker the place is, the brighter my light shines. The darker, the darker the minds are, then the brighter the testimony will be. See, your testimony is most effective when you begin to share it in places where people need to hear it. The places where you came from. You remember how dark of a place you came from? In those places, your testimony, your light will shine the brightest. I have this flashlight in my pocket and when I shine it you know I get a little light you guys can kind of see that right a little bit a little bit got some ushers back there with the light he said oh blinded what's it oh that's pretty bright so you can kind of see it right but watch what happens when we shut off every single one of these lights in three two one. Look how bright this light is. See, we might be in a dark place right now. You may feel like you're in a really dark place, but I'm here to tell you something. Even if you feel like your light is a tiny little matchstick in the darkest of places, even that tiny little matchstick will shine so bright. Come on, you may have been saved one day. You may have only known the glory for but a second. Maybe just in this sermon, you're starting to think, I want that light in me. And God is starting to light you up. I'm here to tell you, it doesn't matter if you went to theology school. It doesn't matter if you just come to church for the first time. Even if you got a little matchstick of a light, it shines the brightest in the darkest places. I want everyone to pull out your cell phone, pull out your phone and begin to shine your light and watch what happens. Watch what happens when we begin to shine the light of Jesus. One matchstick at a time, one light at a time. When we pull our light out, this is what happens. Church, 
Don't ever underestimate what God can do with your life. Don't ever look back, look down on what Jesus can do with the light that is inside of you. He gave you a light. Look at what happens when we all light it up. Looks like the lights are on. Look at this. See the little light on your phone? That's just a little baby light. But when we all light it up together, when we as a church begin to turn our light on, when we as a church begin to light each other up, when we as a church uncover the faith that God has given us, when we as a church begin to testify about the goodness of God, about his faithfulness, about his love, about his favor, when we as a church begin to show people about how loving, how caring, how awesome, and how faithful he is, then in that moment, the world begins to see about the love of Jesus Somebody give God some praise in his place today. Give him some praise. Thank you, media team. You can't be overcome by darkness when you're shining your light. It can't happen. Darkness, the way just the science works is darkness cannot consume light. It's impossible. I don't care how deep the darkness is, it can't consume my light. It can't consume my flame. It can't consume what God has given me. I know how God has touched me. I know what he's done for me. I know my story. He is so real to me. And there's nothing you can say or do that can put this fire out. He's a good God. Give him some praise if you believe that. Number three, stay connected to the source. Stay connected. John 8, 12, again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Follow Jesus and you got the light. See, a light bulb is one of the most meaningless tools. It's fragile see through there's nothing to it unless it's been connected to a source see a light bulb can do nothing for us until i plug that in to a source see god has placed us all of us with a light bulb we have been all been given something within us that at a moment we connect to the source. We begin to illuminate the areas around us. We begin to illuminate the love of Jesus. But until we're connected to the source, our light bulb, our bulb is just a meaningless fixture that's not used for its purpose. I wonder if you've ever thought this. My life has no meaning. I have no purpose. I have no reason. I'm wandering aimlessly. I'm going to give you some encouragement. God has purposed and designed you. And he's, he's already thought it through. See, we don't have a hasty God that just does things last minute. He's thought through the plan of your life since the beginning of time. He's already thought through your beginning and your end. He's thought through everything in between. He already knows what's going to happen. He knows your storybook. He knows it all. And since the beginning of time, since you were even a forethought in your parents' mind, since your parents were a forethought, since their parents were a forethought, since anyone in your line of family was a forethought, God already knew about you and he had you planned out since the beginning of time. And he's giving you a purpose. But until... Until you connect with the source, we will never be able to fulfill that purpose. Stay connected to the source, and you're connected to your purpose. Your purpose is to shine. Your purpose is to let people see the light that's within you. Your purpose is for others to know how good and how great he is. Your purpose is to be a vessel that's used to witness 
and to carry his love in the workplace, in your classroom, in your home, in your marriage, in your family, in every other area that you are. That's the intended purpose of God so that you can shine for Jesus. The light needs power and Jesus is our source of power. Not only that, but the word is a source of power. Psalms 119, 105 says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So we, when we walk with this word in our hearts, when we follow what it says, then we get vision for our now and we get vision for our future. The light, the word begins to light up the way. Not only that, but when we're connected to the source, there's nothing we need to fear. There's nothing we need to be afraid of. Look at Psalms 27.1 of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strongest of my life, the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? See, when you're connected to Jesus, you can go to any dark place in this world and you do not have to be afraid that you're going to be overcome. Think about this. The disciples, before they were lit on fire with the power of the Holy Spirit, they all cowered away and ran to their hiding places, afraid of what was going to happen to them if people found out that they were a follower of Jesus. A little 12-year-old girl looks at Peter in their eyes and says, aren't you a follower of Jesus? And Peter begins to run afraid of what can happen to him. But the moment that the disciples get lit on fire, that they begin to take a boldness and a courage and a fearlessness to stand for Jesus wherever they go. In front of the persecutors, in the middle of the courtroom, in the middle, in front of the faces of those that are going to lock them up, that are going to punish them, they're going to torture them for standing for the gospel. And they say, I'm standing no matter what. Why? Because they were connected to a source of power. See, if you ever felt afraid to stand for Jesus, just plug back into him and he'll give you the boldness that you need to live for him again. See, when we get connected to the power, we got nothing to fear. Our brothers and sisters right now around the world are dying for the gospel. And yet we're afraid of being rejected by a friend. People right now are willing to leave their homes, to climb up into the mountains, into, into a place so they can avoid being put to death and beheaded. And I'm afraid to be called names. I'm afraid to be looked at funny. If it means, if it means that we get to share Jesus with somebody, even if we lose a friend, even if we get called something, even if people look at us funny, even if someone says, you changed, I hope I did. I really hope I did. You can change too. If you got a little taste of this light and this love that I got a taste of, you could change too. As a matter of fact, you need Jesus. You need a little bit of this. That's why I'm letting you know about how good and how great my God is. I don't care if I get called names. I don't care if I get spit on. I don't care if I get ridiculed. I don't care if people tell me all this and that. I do not care. That's the least of my worries. All I care about is shining, shining bright for Jesus. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Which leads to my last point. Let your lifestyle shine. Verse 16, Matthew 5, 16, in the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. See, when you love people, when you begin to meet needs, people will honor God. The enemy has convinced us that if we shine out, the people will push us away. When little do we know, we're carrying the answer that they're looking for. See, good deeds, all that means is when we, any good occupation, any good work, any good business that you're involved in, any good endeavor, make it your business to do good works, to be a light for Jesus, and people will then come to know him. Jesus right now, he lives within us. 
Jesus is not actively going door to door in our city and telling people about himself. He does that through you. And until we go into the darkest places that need the light, they will not come to know Jesus. Which is why he's calling all of us to let our good deeds shine out for all to see. To be uncovered Christians and stop being a secret agent Christian and stand out for Jesus. We need to be the kind of Christian that is a matchstick in the dark place. That is a beacon of hope for people that are hurting, lost, and broken. We need to stand up for Jesus in places when no one else will stand up and say, I know the answer. I know the way. I know you think you know the way, but I know the only way. He is the only truth and he is the only life his name is Jesus and you should try him out come on do I have any Jesus freaks in this place tonight do I have any people in here tonight that are saying I'm standing I'm standing with the beacon of light within me I know that I'm standing with light within me come on do I got one or two more believers in here that are standing up and saying I'm walking with the light I'm walking with his power I'm walking with his goodness Come on, let's all stand to our feet tonight. I want to read one last scripture for you. I want you to let your life show how much you've changed. Let people see how different you are. Let people see that you're more patient. Let people see that you're more forgiving. Let people see that you don't retaliate with violence anymore. Let people see that you don't need the bottle to have a good time. Let people see it. Let people see it. Ephesians 5, 8. For at one time you were darkness. I wasn't just in darkness, I was darkness. But now, you are light. You are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. You used to reflect darkness. You used to represent darkness. But now, represent and reflect the light. Reflect Jesus. Tonight's a night where flames will begin to get restored. The wick, the candle wick of our heart is begin to be reignited by Jesus. Tonight is that night. I'm going to make a call right now. And I'm going to ask you guys to do this. If you're in here and you want your light to be reignited. You want your flame to be reinvigorated. You want your passion to be restored. And you want to be that billboard, that broadcast, that city on a hilltop for Jesus. Then when I count to three, I want you to raise your hand. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this room. I see all those hands. I see all those hands. I see all those hands. I see you guys. I see, come on. Raise your hand up like you're trying to stand out in this place. Raise your hand up like you're trying to shine. I see all those hands. If you raise your hand, I want you to make a bold move. I want you to stand up. I want you to come up to this altar and we're going to pray with you. And we're going to agree and we're going to stand in the gap for you tonight. And we're going to believe God is going to begin to restore the light within you. Come on church, let's give God some praise for everybody whose flame is going to get reignited tonight. If you raise your hand, come on out. Come on out to this altar. Come on up here. Come on up here. Come on up here. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Yes. Church, come on, let's hear it for them. They're still coming, yay!
out of you. God's going to reignite a light within you. God's going to begin to restore a light within you. This light is designed, it's intended to shine out. And people are going to begin to see the difference within you. And when people look at you, they're going to notice something changed. And it's not going to be how great and how awesome and how talented and how good looking you are, although you guys are. It's going to be because Jesus is living inside of you now. And people are going to begin to see hope and life. I want to give you a challenge. I want to challenge you to tell somebody about the decision you made tonight. If there's anybody else who's saying tonight, I want to give my heart to Jesus. You may already be up here, but you're saying, I want to get saved. Which means this, you want to give your heart to Jesus so that you know if you were to die tonight that you would go to heaven. You're not doing it just so you can go to heaven. You're doing it because you know about the good news. Here's the good news. It starts with the bad news. The bad news is we've all sinned and the price for our sin is death. The good news is that God loved us so much that he sent his son to pay the price for you so that you can have forgiveness and a brand new start. I'm here to give you good news that tonight you can receive forgiveness and you can receive salvation if you put your faith in Jesus. Not if you try and go home and change and change your life and come back. No, tonight you can put your faith in Jesus with your mess and all. You can give it to him and he can give you salvation and a new start. If you're in this room and you want to give Jesus your heart and you want to receive forgiveness of your sins, I want you to raise your hand at the count of three. One, two, three. Raise your hands. All the hands up here. All the hands. I see your hands. I see your hand, brother. I want you to come up here. Come on up here. Come on, let's clap it up for him. He's coming up. Anybody else who's out there who's saying, I want to receive Jesus. I want to receive Jesus. Let's clap it up for them too. They're coming up right now, church. Proud of you guys. Let's do this. I want everyone to lift their hands. We're going to need twice as many altar workers up here. Twice as many. We need P12 leaders and altar workers like by, by the dozens. P12 leaders. We need you right here. We need you up here. Pastors and leaders, we need you up here. Thank you guys, thank you. With every hand lifted in this place, we're gonna say a prayer. And right now we're gonna call upon heaven. I want you to listen, let's bring that down for a second. Listen, listen, listen to the Lord. He's speaking right now. Jesus, Jesus. He's lighting the flame. We receive it, God. He's calling you out of darkness. And he's saying, I want you to experience my everlasting light, my marvelous light. I've called you. I've called you, son. I've called you, daughter. You're my chosen. I love you. I have a plan for you. And it's great. And I want you to feel my love. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Father, I thank you for loving me for forgiving me I believe in you Jesus I believe you died on the cross and you rose from the dead so that I can be saved I put my faith in you Jesus Holy Spirit come into my heart from this day forward I'll never be the same I'm a carrier I'm a carrier of your light I am the light of the world and wherever I go I will shine for you give me boldness give me strength give me courage give me power give me fire as I take your light to the dark places thank you Jesus for changing my life in Jesus name I pray amen amen how many of you guys receive that tonight if you're up here at the altar, please do not leave. Do not leave without an altar leader talking with you, praying with you, and helping you take your next step. We have a few more, I believe. 
uh, in this area here guys church this sunday pastor marco is gonna be in the building do not miss it sunday pastor marco's coming back i won't spill the beans but he is gonna bring an on fire word this sunday be here and it also our arrowhead and our pomona campuses online tj campus we're having service all over we love you guys remember this if god is for you there is no one who can come against you have a wonderful night everybody god bless you guys if you need any additional prayer coming up we would love to pray with you